Hi everyone, it's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. Happy Vlogmas Day 17. And as you can tell, it's been kind of a rough day. So we're having No Makeup Tuesday and don't really try that hard on your hair. But why conform to societal expectations? We're just going to go with it. So. But today I wanted to bring you my slightly late November wrap up. And November was actually, I think, one of the worst reading months for me this year. But it's okay. I read 11 months and to be quite honest, about half of these are kids books, but we're going to celebrate just finishing 11 books. And hopefully that makes this a quick wrap up. So let's just jump right in. <laughs> the first book I read in November is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. And this is part of Rick Riordan's imprint, Rick Riordan Presents. And this book is based on Cuban mythology, which is something that is new to me. But it follows Sal and Gabby. Sal is a magician, but he can actually do more than the everyday magic trick. And Gabby does not miss a beat when it comes to spotting his tricks. And they end up manipulating time and space and it could cause the end of the world as we know it. So they have to team up together to reverse the problems that they themselves created. And I thought this was a super cute book. I gave it four stars and I loved how Carlos Hernandez incorporated a lot of Spanish phrases in this book very effortlessly in a way that made it very easy to understand for non-Spanish speakers and I love you are interrupting my video again someone is just being so sassy and needy so needy but anyway four out of five stars really enjoyed it next I read one is a feast for mouse by Judy Cox this is a children's book and it's talking about this little mouse who stumbles upon Thanksgiving leftovers at someone's house and he thinks that just one is a feast for him and he goes along the table getting one olive and one carrot and one scoop of potatoes and things go from there and it is just such a cute cute little book and I gave it four stars. <laughs> Next I read All American Muslim Girl by Nadine J. Courtney and I actually have a book review for this so I won't go into it. I'll link it but I gave this four out of five stars and I thought it was an excellent book. Next I read The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis and again I won't go into this because I do have a spoiler free review that I'll link but it's why historical fiction set in Spain and I gave it four out of five stars. I adored this book. And the next two books I read are children's books. Um, at the end of November I was finishing up my practicum so that's where all these are coming from. But the first was The Biggest Leaf Pile by Steve Metzger. Three out of five stars. And Why Do Leaves Change Color by Betsy Maestro, and I gave that one three stars as well. The next book I read was The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. This is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series, which is the series that follows the original Percy Jackson series. And this series is really cool because it combines Greek and Roman mythology and characters, and so they're at war. <laughs> in a manner of speaking, but I won't go into this because it is the third book in the second series, so I feel like mostly anything of what I say is going to be a spoiler, but as per usual, there's a quest with a limited number of people, it's a ragtag group of kiddos, and somehow through ingenuity and sheer dumb luck, they make their way toward 
the end of their quest. And I just think they're so fun and whimsical. And Rick Riordan's books to me just never get old. So I obviously gave this five out of five stars. And next is one that I read while I was had some downtime at my practicum and this series is so nostalgic for me and I can't really find them anywhere so if you see them out and about let me know but it is the Bailey School Kids the first book in the series Vampires Don't Wear Polka Dots by Debbie Dady and it's only like 80 pages but it's, it's really cute and it follows four kids who have vivid imaginations and in this book they think their teacher is actually a vampire because she's here from Transylvania she's allergic to garlic when they spied on her they saw a coffin like object being moved into their house and it just goes from there and it's just adorable and super quick reads and honestly, I still see a bunch of kids reading them today, so I'm really happy that they've kind of stood the test of time. But I gave that one four out of five stars. Next, I read The House of Hades by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Heroes of Olympus series. And just like in The Mark of Athena, won't go into this, but I did give this book five out of five stars every book in this series just keeps getting more and more action-packed and the stakes just get higher and so I am so excited to jump into The Blood of Olympus. It'll be my second time reading it but it's been a while so I don't remember a ton but I have just loved rereading these and discovering new things and revisiting all my favorite characters and places. Next, I read Christmas Coco Murder, which is a book of three novellas by Carleen O'Connor, Maddie Day, and Alex Erickson. And you don't really have to read those cozy mysteries in order to read these novellas. So overall, um, I liked some of these novellas better than others, but I just gave it an overall rating of four stars because I really did enjoy my time reading it. There were little mini murder novellas and it definitely put me in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> and last but not least, I read The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. And for the third time in this video, I have a review for this book. <laughs> and I will link it, but it's basically like a gender-bent alternative play on the Arthurian legend of Camelot, and Guinevere has come to wed Arthur, but she actually isn't Guinevere. Guinevere died, and she is taking her place in order to protect Arthur from some sort of evil force that is supposed to be coming to Camelot. And I really enjoyed my time reading this. I thought it was really interesting. And I love that she came at this Legend of Camelot from a different perspective. And I think it makes it a lot more accessible to teenagers. Because I know the original stories, the way they're written, can be kind of dry and very detailed. So I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. And if you want more in-depth thoughts, definitely check out my review. So overall, in the month of November, I read 3,218 pages, which is definitely my lowest for the months of this year, but I'm still counting it as a win because I had so much going on, and I still managed to finish 11 books, and that's not including the books that I started but did not finish in November. So, have you read any of these books? If so, did you like them? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.